So not even a day later, Sonic Dream Team is already facing controversy. The controversy surrounding this game's release on Apple Arcade and only on iPhones, Macs, iPads, and Apple TV. To a lot of Sonic fans who do not own an iPhone and only own an Android or any other device are feeling left out on this and are pretty upset about not being able to play this game. And a lot of people are blaming Sega and Sega Hardlight for making this decision to bring this game to Apple and Apple only for exclusivity. But there's actually more to the story that needs to be talked about here. And there's also a glimmer of hope for it coming to other devices. But I'm also going to talk about my own personal opinion, why I think this Apple exclusivity is not bad surrounding the context of it. And you'll see why. But I'm sure a lot of you may actually disagree with me, but that's fine. I'm just sharing my opinion. You can always share yours in the comment section below. But before we hop right into it. Yo, hold up. Did you know that 70% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel? A lot of you guys keep on returning to these videos, so those of you who keep coming back, why not hit the subscribe button? And if you're new here and you end up enjoying this video, I hope that makes you want to subscribe. Thanks, guys. So, like I mentioned before, the game obviously has Apple exclusivity. But here's the thing surrounding it. This game was actually funded by Apple themselves. Apple Arcade has a hand in development for Sonic Dream Team as well as many other Apple Arcade games as their whole goal with Apple Arcade is to fund millions and millions of dollars into games to hopefully make a profit back through their subscription service. And they do this so people can put complete games on Apple Arcade, no microtransactions, just full games that work and don't have anything strange going on with monetization. They have done this with many other games such as the Shantae game that came to Apple Arcade even before it came out on consoles. They have also done it with the creator of Final Fantasy, his game Fantasian, which was really funded by Apple Arcade to be a massive RPG on mobile phones that is reminiscent of older Final Fantasy. It also doesn't hurt to mention that Apple Arcade actually is the biggest video game subscription service at 100 million subscribers, compared to PS Plus at 45, Switch Online at 36, and Game Pass at 25. But that's besides the point. So when I'm saying all this, I'm really saying that Sonic Dream Team from the very, very beginning of making this game was always going to be funded by Apple. So what I'm really saying is this game would not exist without Apple funding the game or Apple Arcade because this game is a huge project for Sega Hardlight compared to Sonic Dash and these other games. The quality difference is insane. They've basically been bumped up and upgraded to making a full on 3D Sonic game, although it looks like it it may be a short game, but overall, in terms of quality for a mobile game, this is almost like a Sonic Generation size. But I'm gonna repeat that one more time, guys. As much as we may not like this exclusivity, it wouldn't exist without Apple, literally. And I know some people are saying things like, well, then it probably shouldn't exist at all. And honestly, I think that take is way too crazy to say, this game shouldn't exist at all because it's not on all platforms. Then should Nintendo games never exist because they're not on all platforms? I feel like that's a little dumb. And I also have seen people say a Nintendo Switch is more affordable than an iPhone. It's actually not true. You can get an iPhone SE that will be able to run this game for about $100. You can get an Apple TV for about $170. A Switch is like $300 or $350. It's actually cheaper to get a cheap iPhone to play this game than getting a whole Nintendo Switch to play Nintendo games. I just don't really think it's a fair argument to say it should have never existed at all just because it can only be played on one platform. I think that's kind of crazy and pretty hypocritical when you think about other games in the gaming sphere. I just think it's because mobile gaming has a terrible stigma and honestly it's deserved because of how mobile games were in the past but a lot of mobile games now have been just a lot better and feel more like actual games these days and are a more viable platform to play games. So saying it shouldn't exist just doesn't really feel fair, I guess. And you could say it's not fair that it's on Apple exclusive, but again, it wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Apple. I think if Sega Hardlight tried to tackle this game with Sega funding most of this, it would not look like this. I don't think they would fund that if I'm being honest. I think this game would never exist to this degree if Sega never partnered with Apple to get huge funding for a Sonic game. So it's probably better that it's here at all and you have the chance to actually play it if you just get an Apple device, even a cheap one. Or even if you don't want a phone, an Apple TV can run it, a Mac can run it. 
And honestly, the best option here, if you don't want a phone, is truly an Apple TV. I mean, it has streaming apps on it, and you can also play games on it. An Apple TV is kind of like a PlayStation TV a little bit, if anybody remembers those things. You can play PS Vita games on the PlayStation TV. This is kind of a similar concept. But with that said, there still is actually hope for this game not staying here. Now, I'm going to be honest, Sonic Dream Team is going to be on Apple Arcade for quite a while, that's for sure. But when it does come to other platforms, or if it does, it will likely be coming to PC and not other Android devices or anything like that, but just probably to PC. For example, the game Fantasian is also an Apple Arcade exclusive and funded by Apple, just like Sonic Dream Team, but it now actually has a Steam listing. So it's very much possible that Sonic Dream Team could come to Steam or some platform like that later in the future, so I don't think all hope is dead. I just think it's never going to come to Android phones, but I feel like it coming to Steam is probably a bigger win, I guess for those who really enjoy playing games like normally, rather on mobile at all. And those of you who don't like gaming on your phone, this game is likely actually going to have controller support, which I think most Apple Arcade games do and they're built around controller support so I don't think that's something you have to be too worried about if you just want to play a game with a controller it just won't look the prettiest it'll be like you're playing a switch game honestly but you can even go a step further and I'll actually probably release a tutorial video for this but you will actually be able to output your iPhone onto a monitor or TV of your liking through a USB hub kind of like a switch dock and if you do this and you have your controller connected you can play on the TV with your controller like you're playing a console game and of course it's using your phone so you won't have access to your phone while you're playing the game or your other option is get a controller that attaches to your phone kind of like a joy-con grip a good one is backbone backbones are really good controllers for phones there's so many options to enhance your experience if you want to experience this game like a normal console game I don't know, from my perspective there's a lot of options for this and there's also a lot of context of why this makes sense and why it is the way it is. I would 100% prefer this to be on other platforms, but that's just not how companies work when they have something they make themselves like Nintendo or Apple. They like their stuff on their own stuff. Sonic Dream Team is technically their stuff, their funding went into it. Now something that's bad about Apple with this whole entire Apple Arcade thing is that you can't own your games through Apple Arcade. It's subscription based only so you have to subscribe like Game Pass to play these games and unlike Game Pass you don't have the choice to buy these games and keep them forever or forever digitally of course because digital is not going to be around forever let's be honest. But you know what I mean. I think that part is really bad and they need a new business model where you can actually purchase the games. If you are already a Apple Arcade subscriber, I think that would be way, way better than just having it locked to being $6 a month or $7 a month. I would rather own Sonic Dream Team instead of paying $7 when I want to play it. Kind of reminds me of paying to play an MMO like Final Fantasy XIV or something. That's something I've never been a fan of personally, which is pay to play. I'd rather just be able to buy the game or have the option to buy the game instead of just having to pay every month to play the game. I think that stuff really sucks, but hey, it is what it is. Outside of that last point, I don't think this controversy is that bad. It's really not that bad. Again, we wouldn't have this game at all if it wasn't for Apple, so that's why it has to be this way. And on top of that, there's a lot of affordable iPhone products. You don't have to get the top of the line product if you just want to play games on it. Or you don't even have to buy a phone, period, an iPad, Mac, or Apple TV, whatever. There's other options. But yeah, those are my thoughts and opinions. I don't expect a lot of people to agree with me. But anyways, let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts? Um, I know some of you guys are probably disappointed because you don't have Apple products. So it's like, dang, this is trash. Trust me, I've been there before. I understand. But it makes sense. I think it's just going to have to come down to acceptance a little bit. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button or not and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Well, whatever happens, happens.